If you've played World of Tanks for any length of time in recent times, you'll have noted that there is the introduction of the brand new Chinese heavy tanks, but today's video is going to showcase why these tanks in particular are probably not that great. And one of the tanks that you can compare it directly to is the Tier 8 Premium that Wargaming have introduced the BZ-176, which was the first of the tank line, and of course, in my opinion, probably the most powerful out of all of the tanks in the tech tree line kind of uh, that we have available for these Chinese heavy tank rocket boosters, because I mean, the fact that I'm even saying that is pretty ridiculous in the first place. But of course, the BZ-75 is a tier 10, and I guess the direct comparison we can make is between what we originally thought these tanks were going to be like, as opposed to what they ended up being and I'm glad that they went the route that they did, even if it does mean that these tanks aren't particularly that powerful. Now, let's give a caveat to what this video is about. We're going to cover two replays, and we're going to also showcase why this tank is maybe just a bit lackluster as a heavy tank at tier 10. So first things first, let's look at the armor, because we can quite easily determine whether or not this thing is actually any good uh, from the armor perspective and of course straight away you can see some really big weak points of this vehicle uh, if you're loading heat ammunition now the key thing that I want to highlight is of course these huge areas on the top of the tank basically if you hit the top of any of these BZs including all of the tanks before it uh, in the tech tree you can pretty much pen the top of the turret in every scenario and even if you start to angle they're very easy to hit anyway and you can cover one of them with the gun if you're maybe looking over here you can hide maybe one and a bit of the top area of the vehicle but you can still pretty much be penned by everything uh, which makes the turret of this thing absolutely atrocious and in fact if you can hit from above this tank you can see it just becomes basically paper and every area of this frontal armor becomes just impossible to really not pen from so it kind of sucks in terms of that regard so the turret already pretty bad what about the rest of the tank well you'll see that the uh, frontal hull or turret armor here that we have is fairly consistent so you can bounce quite a few if anyone doesn't manage to hit the cupola you're probably going to be able to actually bounce one however if someone does have decent aim or you're trying to face hug someone you can actually pen these areas just to the left and to the right of the gun on the BZ-75. So these are a weak point here. Remember you will have to have quite high penetration rounds, 330 plus to be able to consistently pen these. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is a weak point that you can get hit from. And any kind of real uh, high penetration rounds, things like Jaeger is just gonna butter straight through this tank. So yeah, it's, um, it's not very nice if you're playing at tier 10 and you're expecting to bounce a ton in this thing. Now, that's not the only weak point. As you can see, the giant lower plate, which is absolute paper, 240 millimeters, means pretty much every tank you can come up against, even tier 8 vehicles now, will be able to pen the lower plate, as you'd expect with pretty much any tier 10 heavy at this point, with all of the premium round buffs that they've given to uh, the most recent premiums. Which means, yeah, this tank is pretty lacklustre in that department and the air uh, angling of the armour doesn't really help it a whole lot. It's very flat on the frontal lower plate. You do have this angled kind of T10-esque and IS-7-esque uh, armour that you can see here, which can bounce a few rounds maybe if they accidentally hit the top of this, but even then it's not particularly amazing. And you can pen these areas just above that point to be able to go through it really easily. So th that's another weak point. You've got the turret, you've got these pieces either side to the mantlet of the tank you've got this area here which you can pen and you've also got this upper like frontal hull armor that is kind of well angled but is made out of 75 mil thick uh, kind of armor and especially if you're face hugging looking down into it it basically becomes paper as well so you're seeing what the trend of this vehicle is is that it doesn't have a whole lot of armor and as soon as you start to angle this upper hull armor becomes even weaker same on the other side as you expect now you could potentially make an argument that you could side scrape with this thing but don't worry because you can pen this area here as well so that can be penned very easily because you can see the upper engine deck at the back you can hit this area so this is another weak point that the best players will utilize in the game 
And remember, uh, as soon as you start showing any real area of the side of your tank, it is made of paper as well. So you'll get penned pretty much entirely through this. Now, you compare that to the tier 8 version of the tank and you see that it removes that kind of uh, side of the mantlet armor that is a weak point. Uh, you slim down this lower plate. So, you know, if you've been expecting the BZ176 to be transferred in terms of the tank line, you'd be uh, kind of pleasantly surprised from a point of view of being a player not actually playing the tank itself and actually having to come up against them but in terms of the tanks themselves they are significantly worse tier for tier uh, than of course the premium version which thank you wargaming i love the fact that you always do this but either way you know the armor model is just worse in every way pretty much tier for tier um, so don't even expect to bounce anything in this thing and don't worry, because the statistics of the vehicle aren't particularly amazing either. Yes, you have, I guess, okay damage per minute, but it's still not fantastic. 2,260 damage per minute with 650 alpha. You're basically just a worse version of the 60 TP at this point and have a lot worse armor. Uh, the top speed, 30 kilometers an hour. Of course, that doesn't account for the speed boost that you can use in this thing bringing it up to probably about 55 kilometers an hour at top speed uh, when you are using the rocket boost so you can get into position quite quickly but after that you may want to save a few of those boosts to maybe hightail it out of there towards the later stages of the game but we will showcase that in gameplay and showcase that you can still do well even if it isn't particularly a amazing tank but I guess that that's pretty much everything that we really need to cover dispersion isn't amazing 0.4 uh, accuracy is okay aim time 2.78 seconds which is not fantastic granted you can use some of the equipment that can boost that up so vertical stabilizers will help maybe uh, and at the end of the day it's just really down to how you would like to run it i mean i'd highly recommend uh, you using improved aiming to reduce that dispersion as much as possible to make it a bit more consistent you may even want to use vents just to buff everything up by just a small margin and then maybe you'd want to use uh, gun rammer instead so uh, rammer improved aiming and vents maybe is a setup that you could go with uh, but at the end of the day it's really down to how you'd like to perform in this vehicle you could even boost the speed if you think that that is some area that could be potentially useful um, but yeah i just don't think that this tank is really ready for <laughs> for the abuse that is going to take uh, by a lot of the vehicles in game but let's actually jump into the game and see some uh, early replays that have been released in this vehicle so the first replay that we do have is of course on one of the maps that i'm not particularly a big fan of a safe haven and this map is a map that you can use the bz75 quite well on because you can get up close and personal whilst also then relocating uh, using this speed boost now you're seeing an early position taken here at the beginning of the game getting up into this sort of area and then pushing down actually into the central area of the map so you can get down and you can take early game spots up against some of the medium tanks that you might come up against now initially you're seeing here up against an enemy BZ-75 and the key thing about this tank is that you don't overcommit because as soon as you start overcommitting, the lackluster damage per minute that the vehicle has combined with the fact that you don't have the best armor mean you can get overwhelmed really really quickly with this vehicle in particular so just avoid if you're thinking about playing this vehicle and keep in mind that if you do come up against tanks like this that you're probably not going to be able to uh, successfully hold off an entire flank for any period of time without any team support some vehicles you can side scrape you can bounce a ton of rounds off and you can come away with a victory but in this sort of matchup where you were primarily fighting against tier 10s that we've met the mouse the bz and all of these other vehicles then it's not very fun at all now the enemy bz does indeed bounce which sometimes you can do but remember if people are aiming correctly if they're fully aiming and they're actually knowing the weak points that hopefully you guys know within this replay now how to actually take out one of these being those big capola spots on the top of the tank here here and here and obviously the upper hull area uh, when angling like this you can get pen quite easily and you see the first round actually going through managing to pen now luckily our player here knows about the capola weak points raising the gun up making sure that they don't hit that little uh, rat of an area that 
can be pegged quite easily. Now, granted, the super heavy Maus cannot be able to bounce anything more than this tank maybe can. So, you know, you can take it with a pinch of salt. Armor on World of Tanks typically isn't that great in most scenarios, especially if people know where to hit. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't manage to pen the Maus, but already picking up 3,400 damage, which you can certainly deal damage in this tank, I'm not going to say that you can't, but is there better alternatives for a vehicle if I was thinking about buying one? Then yeah, there are. There's much better alternatives. Now I would rather play the 60TP over this thing, which yes, does get this novel unique feature where you may be able to speed boost into someone and ram them, but in the major majority of scenarios it's just not going to be that helpful. Now, the enemy Shah on the team uh, did actually get taken out pretty easily, of course, pushing up quite a bit further than he was expecting to, I expect. And uh, coming up into the central area, you do leave yourself vulnerable from behind. So the fact that the Shah has got taken out is nice. Now, with the slow movement around corners with this tank that you can do, you can really do quite well. And trading with other tier 10 heavies that maybe like the Object 260, don't quite have the consistent damage uh, of having 600 alpha then yeah it's uh, you're probably going to come out quite well against those vehicles but remember uh, if you're coming up against things like the E100 anything with a high alpha the 60 TP you're going to be trading one for one and primarily you may bounce off of them with the 318 or 319 millimeters of heat penetration that you get and for them they're yeah, probably going to be able to pen you most of the time so just take that as a pinch of salt when you think about the block damage that's been done in this replay a lot of it hasn't been fully aimed a lot of it has been uh, against vehicles that maybe they ha don't actually understand the armor model of the BZ-75 so initially just remember that this tank is probably not as good armor wise as it maybe this replay is making out but straight away you can see it's been a fairly average game I mean in terms of being able to consistently deal damage very good uh, but now you're kind of coming to the stale point and this is where the BZ probably struggles the most is the mid game where tanks maybe have uh, significantly less hit points maybe you have significantly less hit points and so sitting out in front of people is just not an option and taking unnecessary hits is not an option because you just don't have the hit point pool that some of the other tier 10 heavies have now here you're seeing some nice side scraping I mean you can try it but remember uh, someone with a good aim will be able to pen you pretty much every single time but remember uh, as well when you factor in that this tank is consistently doing well in terms of the damage every time you hit as long as you're trading at least one for one and you're not being hit by multiple people then you're going to come out all, all right but Luckily in this replay, you know, seeing the good plays, removing himself from being hit from the Progetto on the enemy team so that only the Object 260 is able to hit him, you know, this is going to help you out massively. So you want to be playing it as if you are a kind of uh, a tank that can only really deal with one tank at a time. As soon as you start incorporating multiple tanks, the armor just doesn't hold up. The ability to dish out damage quickly enough just doesn't happen and you're going to end up in a pretty bad place in the game if you don't take that into account. Now the uh, FV215B183 on the enemy team, he's in a terrible spot and unfortunately for him he's going to send himself back to the garage with a lovely sh shell going into him there. And now it's time to refocus on the Maus and the BZ-75 who've been kind of trolling over this side. A uh, lovely little bit of uh, a spot or a shot there going towards the Maus, trying to get the angle but unfortunately not able to. But in this replay kind of running out of rounds at this point with the accuracy and the aim time and just making sure that you can consistently deal damage now you're seeing there a brilliant shell going up into the uh, top of the turret there the weak point like we've highlighted at the beginning and a really really nice shell so you know this is basically what it's going to be like if you decide to play up against this thing or if you're playing uh, with one of these vehicles so just be aware of that top turret weak points and make sure that you aren't kind of wasting your rounds on unnecessary targets uh, that maybe you could just easily pen one of these things. So yeah, not particularly the funnest tank to play, but a really nice round into the object 283 there. Really, really solid hit 
course now pulling back to avoid being able to get hit in the lower plate something that you should always do and now you can kind of pull around use the uh, main armament of the weapon to just basically destroy as many opponents as quickly as possible because when you have such bad dpm removing the guns from the fight are going to help you massively now unfortunately the object 260 here on is on the friendly team you can see is in a bit of an annoying place but might as well actually use him to be able to uh, deal some damage here now then this sort of place in the game is where you can either have a brilliant game or maybe you can end up failing your way uh, throughout the game and having picked up 7,000 damage so far I can only think that you'd want to be securing more and more and maybe even make it to that 10,000 damage mark which I'm sure many players have probably not reached but this tank is certainly a vehicle that you can do that if you do land the shells remember because a lot of these engagements have been at uh, kind of short range and up against tanks that maybe uh, can't quite deal with the weak points um, as quickly and as easily because of the obstacles between the BZ and of course themselves making it slightly difficult to hit those weak points but remember as soon as you're in open terrain as soon as you're in a map like Ents this tank is just not good at all now the Progetto on the enemy team of course pushing down through the middle and you've got to get rid of him because as soon as he can lay out all of his rounds it's going to be curtains and unfortunately for the Progetto I don't think he realizes how many vehicles are around here and a lovely shell goes into him the Leopard 1 obviously not realizing that there is a imminent danger towards him in front and so now pulling back behind now the Progetto on the enemy team plows one round doesn't quite pen and looking down onto the upper plate is lovely unfortunately for the is7 looking up into the kind of upper plate makes it kind of difficult for him to be able to pen but remember as soon as he really fully aimed he would have been able to pen so yet again a kind of lucky bounce or maybe someone that didn't quite understand this tank and the armor model that it does have once again not fully aiming from the is7 coming off to really hurt him and at this point with the alpha that you have trading with an is7 is very very nice and that's really where uh, this sort of tank comes into its element the mouse on the enemy team on pretty low hit points and uh, to all intents and purposes you don't really want to be fighting the low to hit point tanks because of the long reload that it has and especially when you are firing your standard rounds which don't really have that great pen i mean 258 millimeters is fairly standard for a medium but it's not particularly that helpful for a lot of the tanks that you might come up against and unfortunately here comes the negative of the speed boost equipment and oh no what an absolute nightmare missing the Shah Futura allowing him to now come towards but a great use of the speed boost here even if the previous use wasn't as good um, and that allows him to kind of come in ram the Shah Futura and allows him to finish him off quite nicely and now in a pretty precarious point between the mouse and of course the Shah MLE but remember with the HE round that's actually loaded in this vehicle it's quite nice can he hit him yes he can and brilliant use of that round here but he's going to have to rely upon the object 430 on the team to be able to help him out because with only two HE rounds left it's not particularly the easiest against the mouse and with 142 hit points on the mouse you're probably not going to be able to splash him for that much maybe if you hit the engine deck or something like that but for all intents and purposes it's probably not going to be the easiest now the 430 on the friendly team decides he's not actually going to push with the BZ which is kind of a bit disappointing considering he really really does need him to quickly get down there and help out uh, and secure some damage on him unfortunately only manages to do 36 damage which is not good at all and the 430 you really does need to help hopefully he doesn't push out first and gets taken out by the mouse because then it really wouldn't be very easy oh of course i don't know why the 430 would decide to do that it's a real real shame and with only a hundred hit points left and then firing at the mouse maybe should have waited to actually get around the back of him and then maybe would have done a hundred damage but now it's not looking good at all and there's no way of him to be able to do anything the mouse hits the capola weak point as you can see on the top of the tank receiving a shell right in here 
And now it's just a case of waiting for the inevitable, since there's nothing else you can do other than potentially block some damage, or alternatively, wait three minutes and try and avoid taking any damage and come out with a draw, but there's no way of winning against such a super heavy tank. And of course, there it is, the end of the game. And unfortunately, the 430U really didn't help out in this replay, but there you go, the BZ-75 in the first replay really not showcasing why this tank is particularly fun, although 10,742 damage is pretty fun, but running out of rounds definitely isn't. So let's jump into the next replay, we'll showcase the actual post-game stats at the end of the video, and then hopefully I'll join you there. The next replay is on Redshire, and this is a bit better of a map in terms of being able to kind of move around and showcase a little bit more about the tank rather than sitting around the same area on Safe Haven, so hopefully this is a good one for you guys to maybe learn from or maybe see how you can kind of combat this tank uh, better in a lot more of the diverse maps rather than the kind of one-on-one -on -one fighting that you were seeing uh, within the first replay but straight away seeing the speed of this tank getting up into this position quite early in the game considering uh, this is supposed to be the heavy tank and of course uh, looking at plowing around into the 283. Now you wouldn't be able to do this in something like a, uh, <laughs> a 60TP, so I guess that that's one advantage over this and the uh, opposite number heavy tank that you're seeing directly in front. So, you know, you can take these advantages, but remember the arm model is in no way, shape or form close to the 60TP, although it does manage to block a shell. Now if you do get above your opponents, you can use the turret slightly better and it makes it dip more difficult for them to be able to pen those Capola weak points since there's less of an angle. And and that's really what you want with a vehicle like this so hopefully you can kind of utilize that yourself but unfortunately the amx on the enemy team does indeed plow around now where did that actually go directly into the cupola <laughs> there's a surprise so yeah i'm really not thinking that these are particularly outrageous and albeit the first game might have showcased a brilliant one and this replay is also going to showcase a really great result um but at the end of the day, um, I think in the majority of scenarios, with the majority of players that decide to play this tank, it's not going to go anywhere near the same level of damage, and you're probably not going to be anywhere near as consistent. And unfortunately, the accuracy coming into play there up against the AMX, which has way better accuracy, and I would much rather be playing the AMX over this thing, uh, just because it's way more consistent. And consistency in World of Tanks is the way to go, in my opinion, where you're more flexible, more consistent, better accuracy, more consistent damage all of the time, allowing you to get uh, kind of the retracking and assistance via tracking and all of this sort of extra stuff that this tank is going to suffer with because of the long reload and because of the fact that you want to go for the damaging hit and if you don't manage to and you only track someone it means that it's even worse of a result than if you were uh, kind of to actually just uh, pen them outright. So, 2,200 damage done, or 2,100, either way, it's okay. I mean, traded quite well, you can trade quite well with this vehicle, but it's during the later stages of the battle where maybe the side on the left-hand side of the map do actually come around from behind, or maybe they come up from here, and you're kind of in a all-round position that this tank just suffers massively. Like, as soon as they start getting the side of the vehicle, as soon as any real area of this tank gets uh, kind of given to the opponents it's just not going to go very well you can see here trying to get the shot on the amx unfortunately the ae in the way there to be able to consistently do that but a nice round into the amx potentially unfortunately doesn't hit and this is something that you'll be seeing a lot with with this vehicle over some of the others that you'll see in the game and it's nowhere near as consistent accuracy as the amx is so, yeah, I mean, a nice shell into the cupola there, but, you know, when you've got cupolas as big as this, and this weak point, and this weak point, and the upper plate weak point, and basically weak points all over the front, you can't really bounce for too long before someone realises, hang on a minute, I could just shoot them here, here, or here, and then you end up getting taken out pretty quickly. The object 283 decides he's for some reason at the back and he does power around but it doesn't quite go in i'm not surprised sniping at the back with that vehicle is 
not probably the best idea you could have made. Now the AE that was blocking the shells earlier decides now he's going to block even more shells by getting in the way. So a nice round into the hopefully top of the turret of the T10 misses and this is what you'll be seeing and where you know the running out of rounds in this tank really does become super annoying because you don't have an infinite mount and when you're missing as much as you do with this tank yeah it's uh it's not fun it's not fun at all and you can see here already the team are losing by 19 or oh, 9000 damage so yeah, it's not looking like a good one, but you might be able to still pull out a result. I mean, luckily, the T10 gets removed, and now it's time to focus on this AMX. There's a Leopard 1, a Leopard PTA behind. There's a Cranvong that's now decided he's going to just come. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't get uh, the result he was probably hoping for, tracking or whatever. But yeah, lands around into the Cranvong. He misses another one, meaning he only has two shells left. And oh dear, the Leopard PTA is indeed behind. And at this point, you've got to focus the Cranvon, get him out of the game, and then focus on whatever you need to uh, in the later stages. You can see here, ramming the Cranvon, lovely. And now he's behind the AMX. But remember, with the speed boost, you can't actually shut it off, or you can't stop it. So that means that if you do kind of use it, and then you're stuck in the open, you can't reverse out of there, or at least you can only reverse very slowly. Unfortunately for the AMX, he gets set on fire with that round. Now he's not looking so good or not looking so hot. The FE 4005 on the enemy team is now pushing around the corner. And yeah, he's uh, not going to be having too much fun when the HE round of this tank gets loaded. And with the HE, you have 90mm of penetration, but 840 alpha. So it's much like the BZ176 in terms of its alpha with this uh, HE round, but it doesn't get anywhere near the penetration that the tier 8 does for some reason, unbeknownst to anyone else in World of Tanks. Um, yeah, I don't quite know why Wargaming did that, but the FE is of course looking in a pretty precarious spot. He's out up against the Object 263 and uh, yeah, with the HE rounds, hopefully a couple can connect before this uh, 4005 does indeed YOLO at the end of the game potentially. Now the enemy team been throwing away their hit points very nicely of course, uh, only down uh, by 5000 hit points now uh, within this replay. So fingers crossed that margin can come down even more as the game progresses. The FE 4005 takes a lovely hit from the 263 or is it the 268 maybe? Uh, yeah, it is the 268 version 4, and now the FE is not looking so brilliant, and somehow the round manages to hit the FE 4005, which is lovely, and shuts him down, removing the RNG from the game, and hopefully with this result piling up damage, it can continue within this replay. Now there is a 283 somewhere sat back here, but I believe he actually relocated over here at the beginning, because you saw him shoot over here. So I would assume he is actually sat back in the bushes. And of course, when you're in a tank that doesn't particularly have the best view range in the game, you're not probably going to be able to outspot someone in that area. But unfortunately, the 283 doesn't manage to bounce the round after getting spotted in the center. Oh dear, the rounds are starting to dwindle. Only 12 rounds left and with 11,000 hit points on the enemy team, there's no way that single-handedly this vehicle is going to be able to deal that much damage. So you've got that to contend with as well as the fact that your team are dwindling. So relying upon them is becoming even more and more kind of annoying. So the Leopard PTA out in the open and got a kind of standard round here instead of the premium. Uh, premium being in the one slot because... I guess you want to consistently deal damage with this tank and firing the standard rounds with 258 pen against other heavy tanks probably isn't going to go too well. So yes, I do in <laughs> I do kind of get the fact that you'd be using uh, premium rounds here. But Leopard PTA doesn't really need a premium round and in fact you could probably pen him with 90 millimeters of HE pen potentially. But remember, you know, you want to make sure you're securing damage and if you bounce off of him, it's not going to go very well. The 283 on the enemy team does get spotted along with the PTA, hopefully a shell can be connected but not sure at this point and now it's time to try and focus on the 283. One thing that I find this tank, you know, kind of suffers with is it does get 8 degrees of gun depression but it's quite long and it's quite a 
tank that can be a little bit inflexible because of the fact that you're uh, kind of having to expose a lot of your hull to be able to deal shells because of the length of the tank. As soon as you get a bump at the front of the vehicle, it means that you're kind of angled way further up in the air, so the 8 degrees gun depression becomes uh, a lot less usable. But if you can find positions like this, you can still use it, and hopefully your Waffle Panzer IV gets spotted in this area, but granted that there isn't a whole lot of vehicles um, left on the team that are going to be able to spot, it's unlikely that there's going to be any way of uh, outspotting opponents. So you've got that to contend with, you've got the armor to contend with, you've also got the ammo count not being the greatest to contend with, and also the fact that like, as soon as you've used up your speed boost in this tank, you're going to have to contend with the speed being only 30 kilometers an hour in a tank that doesn't really have any armor. So compile that all together, you're kind of left with a very average uh, heavy tank at tier 10 and one that I would probably never really say to go towards first if you're thinking about a kind of solid competitive tier 10 vehicle and by no means is it anywhere near as good as it is tier for tier as the BZ176 down at tier 8 because of the fact that you don't get that really high alpha compared to the tier seeing here around into the FV4005 which is nice a HE round in fact and dealing 800 damage mm -mm -mm. the spicy rounds coming out today so the FE4005 looks like he's going to get taken out, fingers crossed, and then it's time to deal with the Super Conqueror, who is by far the better tank to be fighting on a ridgeline, but when you're caught out in the open in the Super Conqueror, that lower plate, mm, not quite as good as it once was. So 8,000 damage has been done, only 1,700 blocked, and this is probably more reflective of this vehicle compared to the last replay, but with the Cobra on the enemy team, a TNH, an Object 283, and a Waffle Panzer 4 all alive and pretty much on full health each, then yeah, you're going to have to really contend with them and support the team. And this is where the kind of single heavy tank that might be something like a 60TP, which can fend for itself on uh, in most occasions, and maybe something even more like a medium heavy, like a T110E5, or something with a bit more uh, kind of flexibility would be able to deal with tanks on its own but as soon as you use this tank one on one and the enemy tank might be has the DPM advantage they're going to really tear you apart and that's the problem uh, with using tanks like this but the heat round is now loaded hopefully going towards the Cobra finish him off and then deal with whatever you need to later on. So what do you do in this scenario well of course you want to make sure that you know where the opponents are and the unfortunately this tnh doesn't quite realize that this vehicle has pushed up as far as he has and he does actually manage to hit the tnh in the lower plate so lovely result there picking up 8700 damage now and maybe even pushing towards the 10k mark with both of his teammates in support the 268 version 4 the bobject and the uh, waffle panzer 4 both of which could be really helpful up against the enemy Waffle Panzer IV and the enemy Object 283. All tanks, of course, not particularly too much of a threat on their own towards the BZ, but combined could be a real, real pain in the backside. And the lovely shell goes into the Cobra there, finishing him off. And now it's time to use that final couple of speed boosts to get up close and personal with the last remaining vehicles on the enemy team. Remember, the Waffle Panzer IV, if he'd been uh, kind of proactive, could have got into this position, which would be really helpful to him, but maybe he hasn't. Maybe it will be helpful to the v uh, the BZ here, or the BZ, or whatever you want to call it. I know that there's some debate in the comment section of most videos. Uh, what, is it the BZ, or is it the BZ, or is it something else completely? <laughs> and of course, you can leave your own comments in the comment section down below. And if you've been enjoying this video, and if you want to check out some of the other videos on the channel, I highly appreciate it if you did, if you enjoy them, that is. And of course, if you do enjoy it more than just one video, then maybe think about subscribing and uh, seeing what else we have to offer on the channel. So with that out of the way, and the kind of self-promotion, I guess, out of the way, uh, the BZ here, whilst he's pushing towards the opponents, is looking to find this Waffle Panzer IV, or at least someone to start doing something, otherwise it's going to be a bit boring, and with only a minute left in the game, you really have to find them, otherwise it's going to be a draw. No one wants a draw in the game when you're this far in and having done 9,000 damage. Ooh, the Waffle Panzer IV gets spotted, and unfortunately for him, takes a round in the side and finished off right there. Now, 
does the 283 the well does is the 283 in the similar sort of position is he over this side or is he kind of scurried away into the back and beyond of the map hoping to get the draw we're not entirely sure but maybe maybe not the 283 will get spotted and hopefully just hopefully there'll be some more damage left in this game to get the win and of course not end up with below 10k since all of the damage has actually been done when the opponents were spotted there's no potential to be able to get a blind fire in here so the game could end as it is right now with just 9,700 I say just but that is a fantastic result for most vehicles in the game but not one that you'd probably hope for and unfortunately yeah that is how the game ends with a draw unfortunately but there you go the bz75 you're seeing the strengths the weaknesses and hopefully a good overview as to what this tank can do in the game but of course if you have any questions let me know in the comment section down below but we'll check out the post game stats of both replays and see how they're faring within the game i'll see you there so oh my word the first replay that we had was a mastery badge by no surprise picking up over 10,000 damage 10,742 to be exact with 1,075 base experience for the loss meaning that he would have come third on XP for the loss of the game and managing to pick up 232,000 silver uh, a Radley Walters medal a high caliber a top gun a bruiser a duelist fire for effect and a mastery badge and yeah get picking up eight kills unfortunately not able to finish off that very very low tier and uh, well low health mouse that managed to win the game for the enemy team but still made 33,000 silver which is really nice but yeah a little bit of a heartbreak at the end of the game and hopefully you did enjoy watching that replay but what about the second replay the draw the one where this tank just yet again wasn't able to finish off the game and of course still a mastery badge a fire for effect a bruiser an arsonist a duelist radley walter high caliber and top gun as with the previous picking up 9700 damage eight kills and a thousand and forty three assist well base experience yeah another really really good result but not making anywhere near as meant much silver losing 42,000 mainly due to the ammunition 126,000 spent on ammunition but either way both replays being fantastic ones and hopefully you guys did enjoy of course thank you very much to both players for uploading their replay to the what replay site and of course if you've enjoyed watching this video please check out this video on the left which showcases the bz176 the tier 8 premium that is very much better than these two and had just as good games in that tank at tier 8 dealing almost more or if not just slightly less than this replay here so thank you very much i hope you join me in the next one and i hope you subscribe to the channel see ya and goodbye